Hey YouTube, it's Robert Holland. In today's video, we're gonna go over the Claire Illumi Max 120. My channel is sponsored by Adorama, which buys me the time to create videos without the influence of any specific camera brand. I personally shop at Adorama for their great deals on a wide selection of products, as well as their support of those products down the road. So if you end up being interested in any of the products discussed in this video, please use the links in the description below. So if you followed my channel for a while, you know that I've always been on the quest to find the perfect LED light. I've always wanted a single source LED that has a Bowens mount that is quiet enough that I can use for talking head videos without it really screwing up my audio because of really loud fan noises. And I think at this point I've tried five or six that all have the power necessary, they all have the Bowens mount, they all have a functional form factor that I like, but they all fail because they're too loud. Now I've used a lot of panels in the meantime which are sufficient, but really I want the control that I'm used to as a photographer, so having a Bowens mount is perfect. And when I went to WPPI this year, I got my first look at the light that is inside here, which is the Claire Illumi Max 120, and I finally knew this was something that ticked all the boxes for me. So I'm doing a little throwback setup today. We're kind of live unboxing this product, although I wanna let you guys know that I've used this product for over a month. So this is definitely a review. So first off, I really like this case. It's appropriately sized. It's just durable enough. It's definitely not heavy duty. Like there's some bendability to it, but it does the job. This is a shell that will protect the light on the inside. But the thing I like the most is how this lid pops up. So when you set it on the ground, Everything is organized and you can clearly see it without this lid completely falling over backwards, which you can do. You can adjust the tension of this if you'd rather it just flop over completely. But it's really simple. It has these built-in carrying straps and then there's a shoulder strap included if you want to attach it to the side. That way you can swing it over your shoulder for easy transport. Inside the box, you're going to get the power cord. There's actually a couple power cords. I'll explain why in a minute. This is a protective cover. Got the light itself and an included reflector which does have an umbrella mount on it. Then we have this control panel which is also where you can plug in the V-mount battery for it. And then this is the AC adapter. This is the shoulder strap for attaching to the case if you'd like to use that. And it also comes with a very simple remote. So you have a really long AC cable, which right off the jump, I really like that because you can get this wired way across the room between all the different cables. So you plug this into the power brick. Then the power brick has another cord that is also quite long. And that goes into the control panel. From the control panel, you have a third cable, which goes into the top and then plugs into the bottom of the LED light. Protective cover is Bowen's mount, just like the reflector, and covers the light as well as does it with a really low profile, so really like this included cover because I'm probably not gonna use the reflector too often. So once you've got it plugged in, there's a switch at the top here which lets you choose whether you're using the adapter, the AC adapter, or a battery pack, which would be for the V-mount battery pack on the back. The interface for this is extremely simple. We've got a power button to turn it on and off. We've got a really big dial to turn down the brightness of this light, which I'm just gonna keep on minimum right now. And this is a bicolor LED, so we also have control of the Kelvin temperature. So if I switch over here, I'm now modifying the color, and now this dial will change the color of the light anywhere from 3200 to 5600 in 100 Kelvin increments. The other dial is for DMX control. This is a DMX compatible board, so we can plug directly into this and go into an external DMX mixer if we wanna control the lights remotely using a DMX system. I have zero experience with the DMX system, so I'm not gonna talk about that anymore. So it does seem like there's a lot of stuff to this, right? We've got this AC adapter way over there, and then you've got this control panel, and then you've got this light, but all of that allows the light to be really small and compact. This is really lightweight for a 120 watt LED light. You can see on the front right there, the two different colors of the LED lights. Those are the bands that give you the different colors, so it will have different balances of the bands as you change the color temperature. Now by far, my favorite thing about this light is just how quiet it is. It's got a heat sink right here and then it has a fan right above this. Now this is where every other 
LED product that has a Bowens mount with a single source LD. This is where they've all failed me in that they're just way too loud. But right now, this is on and my microphone is right here. And real quick, I wanted to turn off my other LED light, which is the bigger version of this, the 300 watt, which is a little bit noisier. I wanted to turn that one off so that I made sure there was no other sound in here. So this is a fan when it is right next to my directional microphone, like right into it. It is in between my voice and the microphone and it is still so quiet. So you can imagine if we set it just out of frame here, the noise is incredibly quiet. And as soon as you get this thing a few feet away, not on the same plane as your microphone, you're not gonna hear it at all. This is just exceptional. It's so quiet. It's by far the quietest Bowens mount LED panel that I've ever used. So I'm really, really excited about that because finally I don't have to modify my lighting positions just to accommodate the fan noise. In the past when I've tried to use these, I had to keep my lights so far away. But now we've got one that I can literally have in the frame right next to me and I can talk and you can't really hear it at all. The other cool thing is no matter how bright I make this light, the fan stays at the same volume the entire time. And that's really smart because even if we were to change the output of the light, that means that it's going to make the same sound and we can take a room tone of the fan going and remove that from the audio if we need to. But again, it's so quiet, I don't even think that's necessary. All right, so now I've got a V-mount battery on here. I switched the top to battery instead of adapter. That way it knows to draw power from the battery. Now these V-mount batteries are huge, but they also deliver a lot of power for sustained use. So this is a 162 watt hour V-mount battery on here that will power this 120 watt LED for roughly one and a half hours at full power. And if you're at a lower power, like 50%, you'll get three hours out of it. 25%, you'll get roughly six hours out of it. And you can take the Claire Illumimax all the way down to 10%, and it's still respectively bright. Now, I've shown you guys this remote before on other products. It's extremely simple. It allows you to turn the light on and off as well as adjust the power or the color of the LED. So really basic, really simple, but it does its job. And it's nice once you have this mounted somewhere to not have to modify the power by walking up to it and bringing it down. So let's talk about the body of this device. It's really straightforward. You've got the LED in the front with the Bowens mount. The rest is basically just the heat sink and the fan, and then it's balanced into this arm so that you can change the tilt. Now this type of attachment did scare me a little because normally when I see this, it's on the side of panels that really aren't designed to handle a lot of additional weight, but I've been able to mount up to a 48 inch deep softbox, so a very large, very deep softbox, and this is still tight enough to hold its position really rigidly. So 120 watts, I think is really suitable to anything you could potentially want indoors. I mean, it is really bright for indoor use. And 100 watts is about the usability that you can start to expect some use outdoors in daylight. Yes, you're still gonna have to be quite close with the light. Uh, you're not gonna be able to use the deepest, largest, softest modifiers outdoors and get any light with it but it will actually show you some visual results outside, which is nice. But I would say if you're looking at a single source LED like this that you can use outdoors, then opt for the 300, the larger Illumimax 300. It's all daylight, which just means that its peak brightness is actually at 5,600 Kelvin, which is just more suitable to daylight use. And it's 300 watts, which is plenty of power even to use outdoors. I'll follow up with a video showing just how capable a 300 watt LED light can be outside. Really good construction overall. We've got all metal on all the sensitive parts, protecting the heat sink, the fan, the LED. The LED is recessed just the tiniest bit, which is good because you can lay it down without having to worry about making any contact with these small, delicate LED chips right there. The stand attachment is metal as well. In fact, the only thing that is plastic is this handle in the back, which you can use for tilting it. Uh, that's the only thing that's plastic that I can find on here. And overall, there's no displays or panels or buttons that can really get annihilated. So it's nice to have all of that off of the light and lower on the device on the control panel. Another concern with these LEDs is always the quality of light, right? 
what is the CRI, which stands for Color Rendering Index. In basic terms, CRI measures how well the LED or light source can accurately reproduce colors. And thankfully, I have a Sekonic C800 colorometer, so I can test exactly what the CRI of these lights are. All right, so right now I've got this Claire 120 cranked up to around 50%, just so I know that I'm getting a majority of this light source on the meter. And overall, we get a CRI of 96.6. Really close to the 97 CRI that they advertise, so I would deem that as accurate. In fact, it's probably easy to hit 97 if we just brighten it a little bit more. Let's go to 100 real quick, just to see if we can get 97 CRI. Yeah, there we go. So at 100%, we get a 97.2 CRI. Uh, it's gonna go a little bit lower as you use lower light outputs. We see a little bit of a low score in the R9 for res, which is really common for these LED lights. That's basically, if you wanna look at one figure for how good an LED light is, look at the R9 reds, especially because that's where a lot of skin tones are. And we're also seeing some low numbers, a really low number, a 74.5 in the R12. So that's not too great, but otherwise all the colors are represented really accurately and overall it scores really high. So all in all, I love this light. It ticks all the boxes for me. It has really accurate color. It's bright enough for anything that I could possibly want to do with it. It's extremely quiet and it's Bowen's mount single source LED, which is the preferred type of light for me. And it does all this while coming in significantly cheaper than the Aperture 120D, which it is clearly designed to compete with. Right now, you can get this LED for $420, which is just a really great deal compared to what else is on the market right now. And I want to finish with one little PSA about this light, one little problem that I had with it. This doesn't work that well with a Fresnel head. And that's strictly because it's a bicolor LED. And a good Fresnel is designed to project and concentrate the light. And when you do that with this bicolor panel, you tend to see the different stripes of colors. Or if you have the bicolor off, you just see the rows of LEDs that are not being used. So if you really like using Fresnel heads, I would say this isn't the best decision and you should instead opt for the larger Illumimax 300, which it is 300 watts, so it might be a little bit more power than you were looking for, but because it's only a 5600 Kelvin LED, you're not going to have any issues with striping when you're using it with a Fresnel head. But if you have any questions in the meantime, leave them in the comments below. Subscribe if you'd like to see more of my videos and until next time, keep on shooting.